What's up? Welcome back, Geek Variants. So today we're going to talk about the whole House of Dragon episode nine. And the question is, does this episode nine live up to the Game of Thrones-esque episode nine that we're used to seeing? We're going to talk about it. We are here for episode nine. All right. This is what we wait for because this is setting up for the season finale, you know, episode 10 to be a really big one. And how they're going to go about it, I don't know. I didn't read the books, but I've heard some interesting things. So, again, we're going to talk about it. Just make sure that you do me a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe button so you're tuned into all the stuff that we have to offer you. So, the king is dead. No if, ands, or buts about it. But we do know we have a case of mistaken identity towards the end of it, where it said that Aegon is supposed to be king, but again, we have two of those. So which one was he referring to, and who did he think he was talking to? We already know freaking everything with his daughter, and that's where he was leaning. But of course, the queen took it a completely different direction. So that's where we start up. So everything's kind of set up to, you know, you know, usurp the throne from, you know, Rhaenerys, you know, before all this stuff was going on. They had already had plans to put Aegon in place and set all that stuff up. It's been going down since what? Since the first episode when they started setting stuff up with Otto and him, you know, getting Queen Allison or wasn't Queen at the time, but getting her put in. So it's a lot. Like it's my mind is freaking going crazy right now because again, you've seen the setup for the beginning. So now we're finally getting to the meat and potatoes about what's going on. So I'm very excited about this. Now, what I didn't expect, of course, you know, we're talking about did deliver to episode nine hype. So it's gotta be some death in there somewhere. Lord Beesbury, who was very vocal about a hey, we swore freaking allegiance to her, not to him. Why are we going through all this? Y'all been setting all this up since the beginning. Y'all didn't tell me what's going on. Y'all had already set all this stuff up. Man, Sir Kristen said, I'm sick of this noise. Because as soon as he said something about the queen, he went over and put his head to the table. And that was it for Lord Beesbury. So he's done. And it seems everybody else is now on the same page. So we already got our first death. And this seems to be the start of the impending war that's on its way. Um, Again, I, I haven't read books, so I really want to see how this plays out. And again, I'm looking at it straight from the cinematic perspective and everything they got to offer throughout the TV show. But I'm sure Brent is going to have a whole lot more to break down. And as soon as we get through episode 10 and the finale so that, we're going to do a breakdown, I'm sure, about what is going on and what's possibly going to happen in the next season, I'm sure. All right. So because of all this, of course, the king is there. They got to hunt down Aegon. So that he's missing because he has his certain proclivities that he's just used to being into. Yeah, so he they got to go hunt him down. So Eric and Eric, I don't know how to say that much differently. The twins are going to hunt for him, and they're hunting at you know the behest of Otto. Go find him, be secretive about it, whatever. While you know Sir Kristen and Amund are there disguised, so to speak, kind of hard to disguise white hair, uh, to go look for him and find him for the queen. So now it's like a race to find him, which I really don't get the the whole point of the yeah you got to find him and get to him before whatever is like it didn't really matter. I mean, it's still going to be he's the king. It's just who's going to say? I think it was about you know who choosing your hand, I guess, because the hand is going to change possibly. But that don't choose auto, choose someone else or whatever the case may be. So that may be the only thing I think that was of note, but. I could be wrong. By all means, correct me. Let me know down in the comments what is supposed to be happening because I'm just going to make sure I ain't miss nothing. Either way, Eamon is disgusted with his brother because all the stuff that he likes to get into, you know, all the, the little kid fighting. Apparently, he's fathered a couple bastard children who run around there because we've seen one kid in the corner with white hair chained up, it looks like. So, yeah, they got to keep you, you can't go around doing that kind of stuff when you have this very, very dominant trait that freaking presents itself every single time apparently so and that's how they were able to obviously tell about freaking you know Renero's kids and stuff having the black hair and not the white hair yeah they made your kids they made your babies that's why everybody knew 
So with Eamon, of course, wanting what his brother is about to get so that, you know, he's the biggest and the baddest. Like, I'm the one who studied. I'm the one who fights. I'm the one who has the biggest, baddest dragon. Like, everything is saying, like, yo, I need to be king, not this freaking doofus. So, so there's already that that whole tension and stuff there. And I have no doubt at some point, Eamon may be like, yo, either he's going to freaking off his brother or he's going to let his brother get off. So he can come in and take care of business. Very, very likely. Um, Laris. Laris has just been interesting because he's been a thorn in everyone's side, but it's like a thorn you don't know about, a splinter you can't find, needle in a haystack type deal. He's just kind of doing his thing quietly from the corner, and stuff's getting done. And the reason being is that he has the ear of the queen, and he does whatever it is that she needs, and she sees that he's very effective. And in exchange... He gets to look at her feet, not just look at her feet, because like obviously that's something that he wants that he'll never have is, you know, a good set of feet. He jerks off to these feet as well. Like this is what does it for him. So foot fetishes have been around for quite a long time, people, even in this day and age. So he's all about it. That's fine. It's whatever his thing. But again, he's getting the job done because he's setting up for whatever it is, whether it's be to put himself in a better position of power or just to keep a hold of the people in power. We'll see. Um, we see that the brothers are having a bit of an issue while they were looking for Aegon because eventually they found him and and that was through the whole, the white worm who wanted the, the children fight stopped. I and mean, that's good. You know, you want to have all that. But they're having some issues because they went to go get him, Sir Kristen and Aemon show up, so now it's a battle, but one brother walks off, and the other brother is still fighting. And it's like, well, what's going on? And it seems that Eric, with the E, I think is the one who doesn't want any part of this, and he's the one who goes on about his business, while the other one is very, you know, stuck with trying to do his job and get done what he needs to get done. So that's the whole thing. Sir Kristen eventually gets a hold of him. Uh, and they take off to get back to the mother. You see Otto and them have that that whole kind of back and forth about who's really looking out for who, what's for the good of the realm, all this stuff. So all these tensions are boiling high and stuff. And uh, they definitely think there's going to be some flip of the script at some point where, you know, this war is going to happen. So people are going to start changing sides or showing their allegiances or whatever the case may be. I think you had, like, everybody except, like, three bend the knee towards the new alliance or you know break their oath towards you know Rhaenyra's uh Rhaenyra to be queen is like no we're gonna have you know him be king Aegon is gonna be king we're gonna focus on that so the three that were not about it two got escorted off one changed his mind took a knee tried to escape and it didn't go well for him so we already see how this is going to go. Anybody and everybody who has a problem with this is going to get off in silence very quickly. And that's why they even put freaking uh, Rainus, you know, they put her locked up in the room and didn't even let her know what was going on until later. And they were trying to get an answer. It wasn't until later on that Eric attempts to flee with her instead of to get her back to Driftmark or whatever so that she can, you know, get herself together, go warn Renera. Like they got stuff to do. And he got separated from her very easily, might I add, to, you know, get all that stuff done. And even with all this, like, she was still just kind of stuck in the crowd. And she ended up getting shuffled into where they're hoarding everybody to witness. Because they want as many people to witness the ascension of Aegon to King. Everybody in there needs to ascend, you know, to witness the ascension. So, that, so everybody gets pushed in there. And she's part of the rabble who gets pushed in there. And... When it's all said and done, he is crowned king. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it right now. There is no dispute. No one say nothing. He's crowned king, and you think that's the end of the episode? Like, this is where we're at. We're done right here now. And then we see that in the process, you know, Raina's slip off. She went to go get her dragon, and she burst through the floor with not a single care given and start freaking dropping bodies to get her dragon up out that floor and she stared the queen and the new king 
dead in their face, dead in their eyes. Dragon war, roared and everything. Uh, Malayas, I don't know the name of it. Malayas, I think. Uh, Malays, something like that. This dragon roared and was just like, yo, no, I ain't about this. And so like that. And I'm like, you roared and then she took off. And that was it. And I'm like, why didn't you say it? Why didn't you say the word? Like, that was the perfect time to light a fire, to make some freaking s'mores, to charcoal some bodies, something. Everyone was there that needed to get dealt with. I mean, you know, major, the big people who were there need to get dealt with. That could have ended it right there. But at the same time, I kind of know why she didn't, because that probably would have thrown the realm into chaos. Like, you just had freaking Aegon, Amon, the Queen, the Hand, freaking Lord Commander. I freaking wasn't there, but Sir Kristen there. Maybe he's the new Lord Commander. Like, the, the priest guy, like, everybody was there that would have been freaking fried to a crisp. But again... Everybody probably would have lost their stuff. The realm would know what to do. Freaking then, you're gonna have stuff coming from different directions. Like, how how's that gonna be handled? I don't know. I personally would have just like, yo, blow the fire and let's just see how this plays out. But again, we're about to have this scrap so that. So my question is this, and I want to hear it down in the comments of that. Who do you think should rule? Who in this is in the best position to rule? This is what I want to know. I'm really excited to find out how they're going to play this out because we're not going to get an answer at the end of the next episode. So that this has got to go to a season two, but it's going to be something that sets up something epic so that we're all tuned in for season two. This has got to. But we got freaking Aegon, who is the, the ruler right now. We got Rhaenyra, who is the rightful ruler, according to the former King Viserys, who made his intentions known that she is to succeed him we've got freaking aegon the third i believe who has not the ability to rule yet who is not there but he is supposedly the one who's supposed to rule in the future or something like that with the fire and ice and all that stuff you got Amon, who is again better suited to rule according to himself about training and you know being smarter and you know not having the other you know issues and fetishes and all the stuff that you know drive his brother to do whatever the hell he does queen allison should she continue to, to rule so that has she had you know you know thoughts of being on the iron throne should uh reina's should she be the one to take over she's their biggest bad the dragon she could blow everybody up and say i'm i'm running this right now until you know Renair, you know, Renair gets here or whatever. I don't know. They they work out some kind of freaking deal. I don't know. There's a lot going on. A lot going on. So I want to know what do y'all think? Who should be the one to rule? Who should be, you know, the one to to start this war? Who's gonna start this thing? Who's gonna? I mean, blows are already being thrown, but like, who's really gonna get into it? How many people? How many people are gonna die? What's the body count gonna be? And I'm not just talking about the regular people and stuff that don't matter i'm talking about real bodies and stuff like who's going down like we've already seen some some heads chopped off in previous episodes for just speaking out of line so where are we going with this so that's all i got that's the review this thing is epic i'm enjoying the hell out of it by all means leave your comments down below make sure you hit that subscribe button because we are going to talk about episode 10 when it drops and we are going to be in there for everything so i'll catch y'all later See y'all in the next one. Man, this is good.